Hi guys, so this video has been a long time coming. I know a lot of you have asked me about what happened and uh, yeah, so I'm finally going to talk about my experience with the Bose S1 Pro and why I sold it. Like, let's start the story at the beginning and I will try and make it a fluid motion to the end and not circle around back, but I have no idea how this is gonna come out. I've thought about making this video so many times and I just, I can't really get my thoughts to just um, be concise. So this could be interesting, um, but yeah. Starting at the beginning, I was looking to buy a new amplifier. The one that I had, I was experiencing issues with my microphone channel, um, having disconnection sounding noises, and I was under the impression that it was the amplifier um, and not the cables or the microphone as I had a million cables. <laughs> and um, the microphone I had tested in other, like my PA, um, a, stereo system at a music store and it seemed fine like you know it just wasn't happening other than with my amplifier so i ruled it out and said it's the amplifier and since i've wanted to upgrade for a long time this has been the amplifier i've had um, since i started like pretty much since i started busking um, in 2010 so I thought, well, this is the perfect opportunity to upgrade to new amplifier. So I did some research and I came across the Bose S1 Pro and uh, there was a great sale online, which just drew me in to um, buy it through this online company, which they were great, nothing against them. Um, but I just didn't have the opportunity to play through it um, prior to purchase. Um, the sale was a time sensitive thing. So I just jumped in and um, I thought that it would all be good because I'd seen so many positive reviews on YouTube all over the internet um, and yeah, I thought this is going to be great. This will be like a great step up from what I've got at the moment, which what I had um, is a KC Roland, a Roland KC 110, you see already getting flustered. Um, it's a keyboard stereo amplifier and that's what I've been using that amplifier would sort of distort my backing tracks a bit and it was just always having to be pushed to its maximum to go busking with. So, bought this Bose S1 Pro, it arrived. Now, I'm going to insert footage here of all the um, different videos I filmed along the way that I thought I was going to release as separate videos and now it's all just gonna be compiled in the one. So I'm gonna try and, you know, keep it flowing. Um, but here is the first day that I received it. I unboxed it and then I started a test. So let's show a bit of that. I'm really excited to unbox this and give it a go. Hopefully it does a good job for what I need it to. I'm really hoping this is gonna be like a massive upgrade for me. So there it is. Let's have a look at the comparative size. So there we go. So it's actually, all round is a smaller unit than what I've been using. Let's move over to my keyboard now. Okay, keyboard on half, vocals on full or max. Reaching out, I'm falling, trying to keep calling this is it, the end of things. Well, I would say that it's about as loud as my um, KC-110. Maybe it's touch louder, but uh, it's definitely a lot clearer. It's, it's not as loud as I thought it would possibly be. But yeah, it's definitely a lot clearer. I still think it was a good investment, um, especially with the built-in battery. The keys seem to go up really loud on here. I might turn them down to like a three on the actual piano. So maybe up to a four. Um, I have my keyboard that I will be using with this primarily. So um, I will be testing that out um, in a busking situation. 
many times hopefully because this is going to be my busking amp so I'll, I'll get another sort of idea with a different keyboard it'll be interesting to see how it goes out in the open air in a busking situation actually one more thing i'd like to test out would be seeing what the auxiliary in or bluetooth function is like yeah i think i'm going to try the bluetooth let's do that with that. I mean that was just halfway on that track and that completely filled this room. So um, <laughs> my cat is needing attention apparently. Let's see what it's like a little bit louder. And this is also on the recommended volume from the phone. You can turn the phone volume up higher um, but I just thought I'd go with the recommended volume. Hello baby. Let's, um, let's try a little bit louder hey. indoors so far seeming awesome and I don't know I don't really have anything else to say this is sweet I'm happy so my first impression was that it sounded great and I was all positive I was so excited to take it out and go busking um, and so that's what I did um, probably the the next night I think it was I took it out busking and tried it out for the first time so here's some of that guys I'm out in town unfortunately um, one of the like cleaners inside the shops has started going so we do have some background noise but I've set myself up here and um, yeah it's very like you know sparse with people because of the time so the sound um, would be a bit different if it was very busy and maybe I'll do a, another test when it is busy but um, this is when I usually come busking anyway so I like the you know quiet to perform in this and yeah that won't go on forever so um, let's get started so here is what I've got the bow set on and I'm gonna turn it on this is actually what I have set on I'm not sure what level I'm gonna need this so I'll adjust that but I didn't have the keyboard channel up at all differently but back here where I'm hearing it from it is not sounding loud enough and I can't get the vocal channel up any higher okay so the vocal channel it's just not loud enough the keyboard channel has plenty more as does the backing track channel but I am not happy with the vocal channel I don't know whether it's just my setup um, maybe I need like an separate preamp or something to increase the volume of the mic um, obviously the keyboard channel can go up that much like surely the amp has the power there to give out a really good vocal sound but it's just not happening and I'm really disappointed and yeah I don't know I just have to luckily it's quiet tonight I have to keep on working with it though well, I decided to move the amplifier back a bit hopefully I will hear a bit better while I'm playing. I've also turned tone match off on the vocal channel um, because I didn't know whether that was just making it a bit quieter and I've turned the reverb up as well um, to about halfway. So, mm. 
kindness if I fail, you wouldn't catch me. Some kind of friend you are, this was the last time I would fall for your games. Okay guys, I am back home now. I honestly don't know how to feel about tonight. Um, part of me is a bit disappointed about the mic channel, but then, you know, I can't rule out that uh, if I use a different cable, maybe I'll have a different result. Also, like, it wasn't super quiet, and I did have someone say that they could hear me all the way down at Hindley Street, which is, like, a long way away, and yes, like, the sound does travel in Rondon Mall, especially when it's really empty, because it's just, like, one giant tunnel, um, but... I, I don't know if it's loud enough, honestly. Um, when there's lots of people around, it mightn't be loud enough. Um, so I do believe I need to further test it before I can make a solid opinion of this product and just see if it holds its own or was a big waste of money for now. Still trying to remain positive. <laughs> so you can see by the end of that test, I was starting to feel a little downheartened um, and unsure of whether I'd made the right decision, but I wasn't gonna give up on it then. So I decided to test it a second time. I also wanna note the way the sound comes across from my footage of the busking sessions is not how it sounded in person. Um, there's no way for it to translate into exactly what it sounded like in the live environment. Um, and I think that's a bit of like why I was so unsure about it because I'd watch back the footage and think, oh, well, you know, it does sound all right. It does sound loud enough and all of that. But for me there, um, it sounded different. It sounded less powerful than my Roland KC-110 which was not what I was going for when I tried to upgrade my amplifier. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to note that, that as much as I'm trying to share with you the sound, um, how it's coming through from the camera's audio source, um, it's not going to be exactly the same. And there's just no way to share that with you unless you were there. <laughs> so yeah. So I'm all set up and I'm about to start. Let's see how the sound goes now. I'm going to move my amplifier so it's like kind of in line with where I'm sitting so that hopefully I can hear it very clearly. Um, yeah. Okay, so I'm absolutely hating the sound right now. Um, I had it tilted and I think maybe because there's like this um, cover above me, maybe it's hitting that and coming down in a weird way and like, I don't know, but I put it so that it's just flat now, like just sitting straight up. and. Um, I'll see how I go with that. Well, I was getting massive feedback having it sitting flat. Um, so I tipped it back mid-song, but um, yes, disappointing. I thought, you know, upgrading from a 30 watt amplifier to a 150 watt amplifier, that would mean that I would have like heaps of headroom on what I could do with the amp. And obviously it just doesn't translate like that. Um, obviously wattage doesn't mean how loud it can get um, or I have a faulty unit I don't know but I can't get the vocals any higher um, and then like today just my location there was like issues with feedback and I know it's like a whole adjustment thing getting used to a new piece of gear and I guess like I second guess myself when I bought a new uh, keyboard and now I'm second guessing myself with the new amplifier. Uh, I just, I don't know, like, you hope it's gonna be awesome and then I just feel a bit let down. <laughs> yeah, I guess one more test when it's um, really busy, but otherwise I might be sort of feeling some buyer's remorse. I don't know, I don't know if it's just me. It's just my equipment, just my luck. <laughs> and then I decided to test it a third and a fourth and I took it out a total of five times with me busking. Last night I actually had someone come up and admire the amp and say that they loved the sound and what was it and all of this. So I don't know whether it's really in my head or not. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to adjust to it. I'm trying to get used to it. I've put the money into this thing 
Um, I just wish there was more room to move on that mic channel. I was flip-flopping around about it like, no, it's not good enough. Yeah, I think it's okay. No, it's not good enough. Yeah, I think it's okay. So I'm coming around to the sound. As I've said, I wish there was like more room in the vocals. It's not distorting my backing tracks and there's plenty of headroom on those backing tracks and the piano. So I'm coming around to it. Still wonder whether there's something maybe better, but I think we all wonder that. Probably uh, those like two grand AERs would be a lot better, but for my price point, it's a pretty nice amp. So that's that. Often when I go busking, it's late at night and there's not as much background noise um, to compete with. And so I don't need my amplifier to go as loud as I would if I went out in the daytime. Um, so I, I think the fifth time I took it out with me busking was during a busy day um, just before Christmas. And it really struggled then. Um, it was struggling a bit when I was out um, on quiet nights, but it really struggled um, when it had to compete with anything. Um, and I actually had um, an audience member yelling louder. And I was like, I can't, that's as loud as it goes. And uh, it was really just so frustrating for me because I wanted to be able to perform for these people and have them hear me. And my mum was out at the time. Um, we were about to go Christmas shopping, um, late night Christmas shopping. And um, so she was there and she said she actually like got up and moved closer so that she could hear me. And she really hadn't been sitting very far away. Um, so she was struggling to hear it too. It wasn't just me and... Um, the audience member that yelled louder even though he was a bit intoxicated um he was right i was a bit too quiet there's examples of people loving it and examples of people finding it not loud enough and um i wasn't the only one on the it sounds too quiet side of things i was really worried that it was all in my head and that it was a great amplifier and i was just second guessing myself like i did with the Casio um, CTK, I think it was 5200, the keyboard that I bought last year, um, that it, it's okay, but it's not amazing. Anyway, um, so I just, like, I, I thought, here we go, a repeat of that, you know, you're just a crazy person, Samantha, and it's fine, and you just need to be happy with your decision. Um, but at the end of the day, I just wasn't. So here I was um, with an amplifier that I didn't like and uh, not having any money to put into anything else, having spent 680 Australian dollars on this amplifier and I just didn't know what to do. I was so disappointed and unhappy. So eventually came around to, well, I'm going to have to sell this, you know. I did have one last attempt at finding a solution, I went into my um, local music store Derringer's and I uh, tried using a preamp with it because I'd spoken with um, someone overseas who uses this amplifier with a preamp and they said they had no issues with the vocal uh, volume level. So I thought, okay, well, I'll go in, I'll try this preamp. Now, when I spoke about using a preamp with it, the people there were kind of like, but it's already got its own preamp built into it. So why would you need another preamp? Um, and when we sort of tested it in there, they're like, oh yeah, well, it's definitely not the loudest amplifier I've heard. We also tested their in-store Bose S1 Pro, it sounded exactly the same. So it wasn't that mine was faulty. And I had actually called up um, the company I bought it through to say like, I think it might be faulty because the vocal channel just doesn't seem to go loud enough. And they sent me through some um, articles about other people that have thought the same thing, that the vocals don't go loud enough and that it probably wasn't faulty, that it was just, that's how it is. Um, let's just wait for this plane to go. <laughs> I'm trying to film this in the daytime, so this is what I get. Um, yeah, so I had gone in and I tried this preamp and yes, it did improve the volume, um, 
but it was extremely hard to tell, like hard to be sure if that was the right move to buy a separate preamp um, to use with the Bose S1 Pro because in the store, there was so much feedback happening and like I would have put in another hundred dollars onto the preamp and I just couldn't tell in the store what it would be like when I got it out into the mall. I mean, if it wasn't going to feedback, great, you know, the volume level would have been raised, but if it was going to feedback like that, like it would have just been more money down the drain. And I just didn't really want to take that risk. And yes, I'd already put the money into the amplifier, but I had got it at a very um, like good price. It's usually um, $7.99 Australian dollars and I got it for $6.80 Australian dollars. So I had a bit of a margin there for reselling it. Um, and at the end of the day, I, uh, I did make about a hundred dollar loss on it, but I got close to $600 back and that went back in my bank account. And since I, um, had these issues with the Bose S1 Pro, I discovered that I could use my PA, my Yamaha Stage Pass 400i, um, with my battery inverter setup, which before I thought that I wasn't capable of doing that. Like, um, I think I must have tested it. I know I tested it. I think I must have tested it with an old inverter that perhaps um, wasn't as powerful as the one I have currently, because magically I can power my PA um, through the battery inverter. So that's what I've been using this year. Um, I used the Bose S1 Pro for the last time on New Year's Eve. And then I, uh, yeah, I just used the PA since then. I think I'm going to go back to my normal busking amp because I am, like, I wanted to keep my PA really nice um, and busking just destroys equipment and it just gets like so scratched up and everything as much as you try and take care of it. So, and, and plus my PA speaker is a lot heavier um, than my Roland amplifier. So I think I'm going to change back, especially now I've had some other developments, which I'll go to, into in a second. Um, but before I sold the Bose S1 Pro to be sure that I wanted to sell it, I did some tests. Um, and the first test I was just um, outside with my microphone connected into the three amplifiers that I had, my Roland, the Bose and my Yamaha PA, and I was just comparing them. I think of those nights to spend in your arms, but was it all worth it? Was it all worth it? Well, I can stand outside your door, wishing you let me in, or I could free myself from this and run away. I decided from that, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I do want to sell this and try and get something else down the track. Um, and so I went to my uh, local music store again and looked at the Roland Street Cube EX because I'd actually seen another girl out in the mall performing with one and she sounded amazing and volume did not seem like an issue at all. So I was like, right, well, this is probably where... I'm going to go in the future, I'm going to buy one of these Street Cube EXs. Um, so I went and sort of compared the um, Bose S1 Pro to the EX in the store as best I could. And I, I did think, you know, oh great, it does go louder. But when we hooked it up to a piano, like a digital piano, um, there was this weird, like, I don't know, hum? Every time you, you press down on the keys, it would like create some white noise type, you know, like quite loudly. And I honestly don't know now, like whether that was a combination of the cable that was used and the digital piano or whether that amplifier will do that with any keyboard digital piano. Um, because that's a worry because it was really annoying me. Um, and I thought like, you know, in the store, you're all like in positive moods, like, yeah, this is seeming like a really great amplifier to move forward with. Um, and so you just try and sort of overlook that. But luckily enough, because I filmed that little bit of footage, um, which I'll show you in a second, I was able to watch back and realize, well, no, I, I don't want that happening um, because the Street Cube EX is 
think 730 Australian dollars. So I'll basically be putting in what I just paid for the Bose S1 Pro um, plus a bit more. And I want to make sure this time it's definitely what I want, you know, like I don't want to make the same mistake twice. Should we check one, two, one, two. The problem with these is like indoors, you get a different sound to outdoors. So as soon as you're out busking, it really drops down. Yeah. Reaching out, I'm falling, trying to keep calling, and it's all about me now. No longer looking over my shoulder. Check, check, one, two, wow. Check, check, one, two, one, two. Reaching out, I'm falling, trying to. Keep calling this to say the end of things, and it's all about me now. No longer looking over my shoulder. So that's not even fully up, is it? So you can't get it fully up because of the room, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but I'm just saying there's more power there's in more it for power outdoors. I was there and I was testing it with just the microphone the guy said look you know you're not really testing it to the best of its capabilities because you're not putting it under the load that it would be experiencing when you're playing um, keyboards with it um, as well as singing so I then came home and did another comparison between my three amplifiers um, playing the keyboard as well as singing and I finally finally got some footage that I've like cut and paste together to show what the hell I'm hearing <laughs> um, and, and why like the Bose just isn't doing it for me. And actually I had, um, I'd spoken to another of my busking friends about this. Um, her name's Agnes and she plays the violin and she was looking for something to upgrade from her, like I think it's a Roland Micro or something. Um, which I was so amazed that she's playing through this tiny thing and it's just like, it's always sounding good. Um, so I, yeah, anyway, amazed. So I took the Bose S1 Pro out, um, thinking, well, she might be, um, looking to buy it off of me because I'm looking to sell. And, um, she hooked up into it and, um, played through it. I did take some footage, but I don't think I can um, show it because I think it's all copyright. So we, we're not going to worry about that. But after she played through it quite a bit, she said to her, it sounded like her violin was underwater. Now, me walking around, I thought it sounded beautiful, you know, but I'm not fine tuned into um, her violin and what it usually sounds like. Whereas she is, and for her, at least her playing, it sounded underwater and you know it was one of those things like I wasn't sure if what I was hearing behind my behind the amplifier you know playing was different to what the audience was hearing and I'd had you know some positive comments and and all of that 
Um, but what Agnes said about it being underwater, now that's what I can hear um, in this footage of the comparison where I've cut it together with my Roland, what I'm really used to hearing when I go busking, um, to, to the bows. My body's learned to push away all the pain that can come and you stay when he would walk away you listen when he would just dictate i still am happy that i sold it i do think if i'd gone with getting the preamp i could have made it work um, I think that would probably have brought it up to the right level and been all right. But I was just a bit too worried and I wanted, like, if an amp is built to do a certain thing, I just wasn't sure if you try and push it to do something more than that, whether it would, you know, one, be good for the amplifier and, and two, actually, like, work. But I think there is enough around that says that it does work if you get that preamp. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not saying it's a bad amplifier. I like, I loved how loud the backing tracks could go. Um, I thought it was amazing with that Bluetooth. Um, the, the keyboards could go in and go really, um, loud as well, but it just wasn't what I was looking for, um, which was a real shame. And, uh, so I think I'm trying to just remember, have I gone through everything now? <laughs> I think I have. If I haven't, I'll just film another clip when I'm editing. But um, yeah, I think where I'm at now is I, oh, here we go. You see, remembered. Um, <laughs> so I have been experiencing the microphone issues with my PA now. Um, and I think it might be my microphone. I think it was just like a fluke that it didn't happen um, in my PA in the past and through um, the sound system at the music store. I think it's my microphone. Um, without going out and spending money on a new microphone, my mum actually had a microphone from when she used to sing for the elderly aged care facility. She would go out and do a bit of that. Um, but she hasn't done that in a long time. So her microphone was just there and it's had barely any use. And she's loaned it to me to be able to test with my Roland amplifier. So that's going to be um, tested out tonight to see whether I can fix this and whether like I still, the amplifier is still pushed to its max and it still distorts backing tracks. So I do want to get something else down the track. I still want to keep my PA nice for gigs and it's also quite heavy to take out busking. So I definitely want something else. Um, but I think if the microphone connection issues aren't happening um, with a different microphone, then I could get away with for a while longer um, getting a new microphone and just using that for the moment, using my Roland amplifier with the, the new microphone and, um, and just going forward like that for a little bit, you know, have some extra time to save up some money and make sure that I am definite in my decision of what I'm going to buy next. Um, because hopefully I get another eight years from it, you know, <laughs> um, another plane, give me one second. So even though I've gone through this whole thing and I've got to the point where I no longer have this amplifier, I really wanted to share this video um, just to have something out there. Um, like, because I couldn't find anything like this when I was researching this amplifier um, to share with people that like, it's not all roses. Um, it's not the perfect amplifier. It's, it's a great amplifier. And I honestly believe it would be wonderful for instrumentalists. Um, because you wouldn't be limited by that vocal channel. Um, but yeah, I, I just wanted to sort of make it known that for some people, the vocal channel does not go loud enough, <laughs> that um, a preamp may be needed. Uh, if you actually have one, you know, like how to fix this issue. Like even though I don't have it anymore and it's just like of no use to me, <laughs> 
Um, other people that have this amplifier might be searching around trying to find an answer for this. So if you have an answer, you know, feel free to comment it down below. I'm sure you could help some people out um, with this amplifier. And I also think they're like amazing just for playing like music through Bluetooth. I've seen some videos with um, with a guy that has a couple in his house just as a stereo system. I mean, I wouldn't be able to afford that sort of uh, price point for a stereo system, but they do sound amazing. Uh, and you know, if you want background music for, for parties or whatever, it, it's still gonna be a wonderful amp. It just wasn't the right one for me. It's also worth mentioning that if I could have afforded to keep it as a monitor to use for gigs um, in conjunction with my PA, then I totally would have. I used it for a market gig um, as a monitor, just angled it up, and I really enjoyed having that extra sound coming back towards me. But unfortunately, I don't have the money to spare. Like, I wasn't, um, you know, because it wasn't working for me, I really did need to get that money back as much as I could um, and be able to put it into other things. So that's what I did. And um, yeah, it's funny because actually um, a couple of days ago I was in town um, with mum and we were walking through the mall and there was someone busking with a Bose S1 Pro and they were doing a um, sort of like a comedy um, knife act type combination thing. It means he doesn't love you, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so they were using a um, like wireless um, lavalier type mic or heads headset, that's the word I'm looking for. He was up so loud. Um, and so I tried to look over and see what he was using, but I mean, there was a big crowd and everything. It was kind of hard to see. I think I did see something on the ground there, but it looked um, really small, like, you know, smaller than the preamps I looked at. So I, I'm not entirely sure, but somehow with his, he was like pounding it. Um, so, you know, it makes me heaps confused, but I couldn't achieve that result with that amplifier. So it could just be me and it could be just the best amplifier for everyone else but me. I think that's about it. I, this whole journey, it's uh, been a big whirlwind, but here we are on the other side and thank you for patiently waiting for this story. Um, if you are new here and this is the first thing you're seeing from me, then, you know, thanks for joining and sticking out to the end. Um, hopefully you've uh, taken something away from this video, if uh, nothing else, but uh, yeah, look, thanks for joining me and um, I'll have some more videos coming soon. I actually have something uh, exciting to share with you. Um, another purchase and not a disappointed one this time. So uh, yeah, I will get to that very soon. Thank you for watching this video. There's plenty more on here if you're interested. Like and subscribe and I'll see you again next time. Bye.